Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mighty Mouse channel. If you've been around this channel or you're a fan, you know that I like to do a review and comparison. Well, today I've got one. This is going to be fun. Now, I keep learning things about Crayola. I, I have no clue how long these watercolor pencils have been around, but I saw these on Amazon on sale, eight and a half bucks. Couldn't say no. So I got them and I'm going to compare them to two others. I'm going to do a quick sketch. This was the set that I got first. I think this was a present one year, uh, maybe eight years or so ago. And I've used these a number of times. They're nice, they're fun, and there's different ways to work with them. I'm going to show you the, the couple of ways that I have worked with them. And then the professional name brand, which is Derwent. Now this is, I I don't remember how much I paid for this. It was probably on sale at Hobby Lobby or something. But uh, this is probably 25% of the cost of this. And they both have 24 pencils. So for eight and a half bucks, how does it compare to the professional brand? That's gonna be interesting. I have no clue. Haven't even opened this up yet to see if they're already sharpened. I hope they're not, because I like to sharpen them the first time myself, but that's okay. Factory sharpens fine with me. So I'm going to do this on a smaller pad. I said to myself, self, what kind of paper we wanna use with watercolor? And as you can see here, the different shades that I've got. This is a hard press card stock here. Uh, something you would use. Uh, I don't know if it would be good for watercolor, but it's good for markers. Now this is more of a thin all-purpose paper and I'm going to use this. It's going to buckle up, up, buckle up on me, I know, but this is, this is more of a pastel slash color pencil type paper. Now my supply of watercolor paper is getting low and that's why I'm going to use this paper. Uh, this is cheap stuff and this is just a review i'm not trying to make a masterpiece that would go on the wall it's just going to be a quick sketch and what i'm thinking i'm going to do is like do some sort of a dead trunk here with some grass around it and maybe some flowers growing out of it or down here it'd be really quick and maybe some clouds in the sky or something it's not going to be you know graphically correct i just want to do the same thing with all three of these uh, color pencils and see how they perform uh, one after the other. I'm going to go first with the uh, Crayolas, then I'm going to go with the Kimberly, and then I'll go with the Derwent, and then I'll come back with a review. I'm going to go in fast motion here, uh, time lapse, because uh, a lot of it's just redundant, but I'm going to stop when I see an observation worth making note of. So Come along with me. We're going to compare today. This is going to be fun. I can't wait to see the results. Here we go. Okay, just as an FYI, uh, they felt good going down. Uh, there was a lot of resistance. It didn't feel like they're as soft as uh, water, as regular color pencils are. Uh, but I remember that the Crayola brand was uh, more crisp, I would say, uh, a, a harder color pencil than the compare thing that I was comparing it to, which was Prismacolor. Prismacolor seemed to be a whole lot more soft. And, uh, but in, in this comparison here, I don't know what I'm expecting. So I'm going to come back after I've done all three of these sketches and, and put water to them. And then when I'm, they're dry, I'm going to come back and color again over the dry, uh, pigment. I should be able to do that with all three. And then for a final, I'm going to do a single page of pulling watercolor off of the pencils themselves, just to show you what kind of pigment we're working with in a pencil form. So this went well. Here we go with the next one, Kimberly.
Okay, the Kimberly went down almost exactly. Felt the same. Only it felt a little bit more waxy uh, than the Crayolas. They felt more dry, like you would think that a color watercolor pencil would be, uh, but not quite like a pastel. So let's move on to the Derwin. You know, I always do my best to try to, to draw the same thing more than once. Uh, somehow they always get different. So one of these leaks. I think it's that one. I don't want too much water. Okay, this is the Crayola. And here we go with watering down. Oh, that looks nice. Look at how that's spreading. Surprise, surprise. Crayola is a viable source, in my humble opinion. I like it. So this water color brush here, you can squeeze it if it's not coming out fast enough. Or you can do like I did when I really want to wet things down. I remove the restrictor in this one here. And yeah, see, too much coming out. <laughs> water, water went all the way through the paper. I really didn't want to do that. So that's that's too fast. So I got a different one here. Let's try this. That's good. Oh, so let's see how this looks. Oh, look at how that just comes to life. Now, uh, the Kimberly did not have gray, and uh, the Derwent did not have purple, per se. So this is drying out. It's not coming out fast enough. Let's see if I got one. I got a whole bunch of these. Maybe this one. This is the Tombow. Yeah, there we go. So this is this is a flat Tombow here, and uh, it has certain applications. So what's really cool about this is you can actually smear the color a little bit further. But there's there's not that much on the paper. And if I go like this, you're going to leave vertical lines. So if you, if you want the ground to be look like flat or to have some depth to it, you're going to have to go in one direction and stay consistent with it. So come back over this it once it's dried it's pretty much permanent I can't make it work anymore so let's take the little one here and see if we can do some flowers oh yeah now you remember it will pick up everything so I've got black in there that's why I wanted to see how how well they blend. So you can come back over this. A little bit left on the brush for that one. A little bit of purple went in there. So you gotta clean your brush off with these things because they, they do very well at picking up. So this one is done. I can't make it spread anymore. I think that uh, for practice art at least, uh, I would spend eight and a half bucks. Oh, I just did. All right, now for the Kimberly. I'm going to try to do the same thing. This one here has a big brush. And here we go. Oh, it feels like almost the same thing. Very rich colors. I'm having to squeeze the tube. Because I want it, I don't want it uh, too dry. But you can, you can see with practice, you can actually get, get some interesting effects in clouds. You don't necessarily have to draw them; you can paint them. 
when I come back and show you how to pull ink or pull um, paint pigment off of the uh, oh my goodness is that heavy yeah this Kimberly is, it seems like has more pigment I don't know look at how dark that is Interesting. Now, we've seen two so far, and uh, I've got to say, the um, Crayola looks clean compared to that. Kimberly, uh, that's, <laughs> Crayola just never ceases to amaze me these days. You know, the Crayola may have looked clean because I didn't put as much pigment down. And this one here has got a lot of pigment on it as well. It might uh, be quite dark. So here we go with the sky. Yep. I do feel a more of a sense of control. But I don't know that it's... I mean, if you were doing professional work, you would eventually land on a favorite and uh, stay with it. This is the sort of thing that is probably a personal preference thing. Yeah, see, I I put too much black on here, so I really can't work with it. I think the, uh, the browns and the greens seem to be blending pretty well. Well, getting dry. There we go. So, let's go with the little one. I don't know how these uh, brushes work, how they uh, put out just so much, not a lot of water. It gives you really good control especially for these minute details like this. Somehow the, the water flows out perfectly. That is really cool. Now I feel unfair with the Derwent here. I'm going to use a black and come back with gray. Let's see, I had this over here. and come back over with the shake of your, your hand, the better results you're gonna have. Okay, now I put less on there, so I'm across the top because it's a broken tree. Now let's come back over that with some water and see how clean it does. Yeah, that, that's not bad. So you got to be careful with how much pigment you put down the first time. Once this dries, you can come back and put down some more. I mean, look at look at that. It just it just ruined the effect I was after. I think that I probably would uh, do this individually with uh, taking the ink or the pigment off of. I can actually take it from here and spread it over here. There's so much of that in there. I don't know how the Crayola did so well. Maybe because it has less pigment. I don't know. But I'm going to let these dry and come back here in a few minutes and go over it again to show you how you would finish a watercolor pencil set. And then I'm going to take a single sheet and show all three being pulled off of uh, a color. Maybe two colors. Black and green or something. I'll be back shortly. Yeah, you can tell the color the color. Yeah, you can tell this is a uh, thin paper, not really meant for watercolor. Uh, the watercolor paper or any kind of wet paper, 140 pound, 150. This is, it feels like about 60. <laughs> but the trick to 
getting the paper to go back to normal is to take a sprayer and, and spray the back side and it'll flatten out and it'll dry and stay that way but i'm not going to bother with this what i want to do now is show you uh going back to the color pencil So when you do a uh, watercolor pencil type work, it's best to build rather than go down heavy all at once because you're not using, you know, little pans of watercolor. And with this, you're drawing it down and then you're smearing it and finding out what you have. Uh, until you've done it a lot, you really, really are guessing. And so I would come back and probably take this darker color black and and do some highlighting in here and I lost this thing over here now if, if you wanted to you could come back in and hit those that you just put down and you see that they turn dark because they're brand new so now I have some etching on top of this. And it doesn't matter what kind of watercolor pencils you're using. The principle is the same. You can keep coming back over again and again. And you can give it, you know, more of a textured look. Or you want it heavier. Let's say I wanted more green in here. That looks good, but now I've got pencil marks. You can't ever get rid of the pencil marks, but you can work them in and blend the colors. I see that the browns that are down there, they're not coming up. Once they're wet, they're usually pretty good and permanent, but I just made it all green or greener. That's how much was left on the brush. So that's the principle behind these things. And from what I've seen and what I have done, the Crayola actually looks the best and is performing uh, expertly, I would say. So let's take a look at how they come off the pencil. Now for this part of the experiment, I'm going to use the smoother side of this cardstock. And this would be similar to a hot press paper. And because I'm using the smooth side, the paper's going to absorb less. And it sh should show me pigment, pigment scatter. And uh, like I said, I was going to go with dark colors. So I'm going to try black. And uh, that's not really green. Let's see if I got a green. Uh, green. This is the problem with your higher end uh, sets. They don't have standard red, green, blue, black, yellow, etc. Like like Crayola focuses in on this instead of having blah, 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 green, you know, uh, grass green or tree green or sky green or who knows. Anyway, if you're going to take them off, I'm going to put this down for Crayola and Kimberly and Derwent. So... You can actually use these like little um, pans. You know, actually, I don't want to use this one. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go very fine, like I'm doing some some uh, ex expert details, and I can see the water uh, coming out of the brush and going on to here. And now it's just the same as using a watercolor set look at that isn't that great let's try the green so what i like to do is uh use this for finish work i actually did a, a whole experiment I think I may have done a YouTube video where I pulled the ink off. And uh, the watercolor pigments on these pencils, in my opinion, are good enough. 
for doing work, but you just, it's harder because you can't dip your, your brush into a pan and swirl around and just get tremendous amounts out. It would be less than what you're used to using. You can see that green went pretty far. And when we're done here, I'm going to, let's see, green and black. So the Kimberly has uh, 707 green and 715 black. I expect the Kimberly to be very similar in pigment to the Crayola. Oh no, not similar at all. Boy, you can really tell a difference. This is, this is why I'm showing you this part of this uh, <laughs> experiment. Wow, look at all the pigment that went on that brush, crazy. Okay, so that gives you a clear idea of the amount of pigment inside of the General's Kimberly set. Well, let's see if I can get some of this. I probably should have sharpened this first. Uh, this is cool, isn't it? <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this because this is this is rather fun. Yeah, look at the difference in that green. That That's truly a amazing difference. This is much heavier. A whole lot more is going down on that brush. Wow. All right, time for Dr. Derwent here. And see if I can find a black. And is that black? Nope, it's ivory black. Yeah, they don't have a just black. And what did I use, green? Can I find just green? Uh, I see a green. It's uh, emerald green. That's the closest to green. Yeah, grass green, may green, and emerald green. Oh, wait a minute. Here's one more. This one here is darker. This is uh, mineral green. Wow. It, this is the trouble with these expensive sets. Uh, you're going to look for green. And what is true green? How do you describe what is yellow? How do you describe what is red? Um I don't know, but the ends of these give you an idea of how dark they are. And this one is lighter than those. This one is darker than those. But the black should be black, but it, it's actually ivory black. What does that mean? Most of the time, if I'm ever using these things, I'm just, I'm just drawing, just to draw, just, just to, to keep active in the art. I don't know that I could ever do a a piece worthy of the wall. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Okay, so that's uh, ivory black. That's that's really black. I think it's blacker than the other one. Look at that. Still coming off. Okay, we're going to try this green because green, green. I would say this is closer to green. So as you take this stuff off and you're not used to using color pencils, it's a challenge. It's actually kind of fun. Uh, if you were to take these out with you traveling, they'd be a whole lot easier to carry than a big pan. Uh, and you don't, you don't have to have a mixing. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good green. So I'm going to quit there. That's for taking them off. So once you have put a, uh, a color down, let's say you're, you're going to color that and then you're going to color that. Those are maneuverable at this stage, but once you put down water, uh, you pretty much are done with messing with that. Now you can see that spreads really, really nice, but you still have the original scratch. You can actually see the black scratch as well. So 
that's not an issue. That's just a function of these uh, types of ink. Let's go back to here. Kimberly. I meant to say pigment. It's just a function of uh, color, watercolor pencils, the way that the pigment, because what you're doing is, is you're taking, oh, look at that. That's interesting. There's less of a scratch down there that the other, other one had. Let's see if I can clean this off. Yeah, the original scratch does not show up as much with the Kimberly. That's interesting, but it doesn't spread as well either. It's like it dried out my my brush. This kind of spread better. All right, last one. I'll take the black and the green. Almost done here, folks. I think this has been very educational. So the green. Yeah, you can see the under scratching st staying there. And the black. I didn't bother to clean off the black because I. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you can barely see it under scratching. All right, so. You choose. Which one of these did the best? Uh, Crayola? Kimberly? Which would be something you'd buy at Hobby Lobby. And then, uh, because I think Hobby Lobby sells generals. And then Derwent. Um, I think the end result is surprising that the amount of ink, I keep saying ink, the amount of pigment that's delivered is very similar, except in, in this one here. That one looks better. I think the, the, for the price... I mean, I haven't priced these Derwent in a long time, but I know that they're a lot more expensive than Crayola or Kimberly. And so here's Crayola again. And then here is Kimberly. And then here is, let me back out. All right, a little bit of a top-down view here by hand. So here is the Crayola. I think it looks great. Here is the Kimberly. I think it looks pretty good too. And here is the Derwent. Now, I'm actually kind of disappointed in the Derwent, uh, but I like the control I'm seeing here. But truth be told, this is not my venue. This is not my genre or whatever you would call it. the medium here is, is kind of takes, it has a big, heavy learning curve, but yet at the same time, it's probably more fun than, than watercolors itself. I think that uh, if you were going to branch into uh, doing watercolor pencils, I would start with a Crayola set. Once again, Crayola wins. Now, I did a Crayola comparison to my Prismacolor color pencils. Take a look at this photo. Which one did you choose? Which one did you like better, the Prismacolor or the uh, Crayola? I think that Crayola's come a long way from crayons and they're branching into the market here is looking good. I think that when you pay a lot of money for something and you're a professional and you're used to working with it and your work sells, stay there. But if you're just coming into the program here, I would go with something that says green is green, blue is blue, red is red, black is black, because this is going to confuse you. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I hope it was educational for you and fun. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.